right. Happy Shiro Day, everyone. Uh, have this recorded a couple days ago, and then I remembered that it's about to be Shiro Day. I'm not going to be doing the Twitter stuff because um, they are forcing users to allow Twitter or X, whatever, to use their posts to train AIs. That is the biggest fucking mistake because, like, most of X's bots, so now bots are going to be like creating parameters for an AI. Dumb, dumb stuff. Uh, anyway, I had my opinion of Emia. It hasn't changed even after hearing um, other people's opinions. Uh, if we look at him mp1 to mp1 of other characters yeah he, he definitely looks lackluster in terms of damage but he's also a four star permanent and it's kind of not fair to com compare a day one servant with day one stats to a year nine five star i know it's not direct comparison because you could compare him to like more modern archers but the fact of the matter is he's clunky he's clunky as shit but that doesn't stop him from being fun. And if he's going to be fun, he might as well be effective. That's my stance on this. If he's not going to be like fitting the modern molds of Double Bitch Oberon, Double Castoria Oberon, uh, he at least has to be fun while he does it and like do somewhat decent damage. If you think this is somewhat decent damage what nodes are you doing no if you think this is somewhat decent damage what nodes are you doing you you can't be doing anything higher than 90 plus you literally can't be doing anything higher than 90 plus if you think this is a somewhat decent damage threshold of 93,000. this is without his buffs being uh, or sorry, not his buffs, his most recent buff being taken into consideration. For the other recording, I did the calc for this. And in double in comps where he uses double bitch, his turn one, his turn three damage literally becomes his turn one. That's a dramatic shift. That's a very dramatic shift. But it also kind of shows you how big, how small the gap between his highs and his lows it was at least consistent and like seventy-two thousand damage for turn one that's not terrible that's actually like very competitive with all these other servants it's always been his turn three damage that really sucked he was using bitch but he never had anything to actually double stack with bitch besides crit damage and uh, it isn't that it's kind of, it's a little scary i'm not gonna lie like his actual crit damage or effective crit damage um like especially if you're fighting man attribute you th there's a decent chance you might actually hit the cap um but yeah so let's get started you all know emia he's been in the game for the very beginning uh base attack they didn't screw him on this it's i mean it's not 10k but at least it's in the normal bar ballpark for four stars even almost 10 years down the line line yeah hp a little lower but i mean are you really expecting anything are you expecting emia to have like jinnico level hp because he gets bodied like pretty commonly in fact he's the first servant to really get bodied in the fucking war so him having like high HP, kind of an oxymoron. Uh, star weight, star gen. These are normal archer numbers. MP charge at 0.51. Uh, when you see his arts MP, like in terms of hit counts, he is compared to Valkyries and Caster Gill. He has double on on the way to triple their mp gain so if you've used those characters you should know is mp bar when it hits 100 it's going far past 100 uh 
also in the other recording i never really uh showed any of his damage any of his farming turns like at like higher than mp1 so that's something that we're going to be doing in this video or not this video this take um yeah hit counts it's awkward as shit because he has a triple art stack and his base mp was a buster mp so on release he was never able to do buster brave chain sad 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 nowadays uh he can change how he does his mighty chains whether he's doing buster quick arts or arts mp buster quick um or quick buster if he wants to like really capitalize on the quick damage um yeah like realistically his like best damaging turn is going to be mighty chain uh arts mp quick and buster crit uh just because of how much fucking buster crit he actually will have uh in a best case scenario now obviously getting a mighty chain is not going to be that common but he at least has like decent potential like along with having a ridiculous amount of like crit damage in comparison to like other four stars like we'll, we'll get to it but just remember all of his buffs all of his multi-turn buffs can be double or double stacked with Point and Skya because you can't can't use him in other comps. Then you need double Point and Skya and need Castoria. Otherwise, the Arts MP isn't gonna go zero to one hundred every time. So this is the buff skill before it was Eye of the Mind true, and this is the first time this skill has ever been buffed. So all other Eye of the Mind True are up to being buffed. So Saito, uh, Dermud, and Pachi. And let's see other Eye of the Mind True. Uh, Kron, Fergus. Oh God, Fergus getting another buff. Okay. Um, and then Dion. Dion needs the buff. It, it's a good thing Dion. Now this skill is going to be buff because Dion needs the help. So he goes from not having his own attack buff to having a 30% attack buff on a six turn cooldown. With a pen five, you can double stack this or not double stack it. Sorry. You can get this skill back off cooldown for turn two and have fairly decent turn two damage. Um, yeah, when we get to um, the farming, I'm going to be using max uh, a pen 5, not mana loading. Because it kind of works better for him, like in just like battery usage, like not wasting shit. Uh, if he doesn't have mana loading, at least if you like, if you have a choice between ter um, mana loading and uh, a pen 3, uh, or pen 5, sorry. Uh, we'll get into that later, but PLDR, if you do mana loading, uh, you're able to pop Castor MP easier, as is like with everything else. But getting back to this, uh, defense went from 18%, I believe. Yes, 18 to 30. And he also gets a 40 star bomb. If you really don't remember Emiya's second skill, you might forget that he has 100% crit damage. Yeah, um, a lot like the star gen of 100%, which is needed for arts MPs to like actually gen stars, like, guaranteed. Uh, people forget that Hawkeye, it's not just the star gen, it's also 100% crit damage. So now Emiya has 60% attack and 200% crit damage just from double stacking his own skills alone. Let me repeat that. 60% attack and 200% crit damage from him alone. So when we break, if you're fighting, again, niche case, uh, man, human, enemy, you have not only the 300% crit damage or buster crit damage in that instance, you also have another 100% power mod on top of that. And if you're using Black Rail, um, you like you come very very close to hitting uh caps not all at once obviously not all at once like you can't use crit damage to make an mp uh hit harder 
can't crit it on the MP. That's what MP damage is for. Um, but the power mods do um, play in the middle ground. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Again, man, uh, man attribute and human enemy. You're easily. There's a very good chance they're hitting caps. Uh, for Emiya specifically, that he is hitting 500% crit damage, or at like 500% in that part of the formula. So 300% crit damage, um, and then again, in that new case, you're getting 200% um, in power movements. This is a very, very niche example too, because it's not common that human and man like overlap in the same entity, because uh oh I, no not for bosses not for bosses for crash mobs it happens all the time like a lot like uh alignments are only two servants for, for the most part but attributes every everything in the game has an attribute so emia like because of that like he has a decent niche of just like his first few turns are just like he rips people to shreds with all the swords it, like literally just rains all the swords down and if he's fighting men all gonna die so like everything has just like built up to make him like function better as a generic farmer like but again they've had to buff him so many times to get him to this point as a base servant yeah no like you're one version of emia not not great this like the modern emia like has at least some potential for having fun again i'm not saying that he's going to be like overtaking like five stars it's just like this is fun um seeing an art servant gen this much stars and then switching to buster like this again if you get screwed on carding it is like you got screwed on carding third skill this is the skill that has been buffed twice. It started off as dog shit. It got better. And now it's where it is now. So 50% card buff across the board for one turn. Um, literally the same as Geronimo. Like all Geronimo's skills before his buff was on Emiya's. And then it also did some other shit. Same could be said for Muramasa. The key thing is you are able to switch between Arts MP and Buster. That's why on this sheet, uh, it lists that you have Castoria uh, in your team. Sorry, over here, Castoria and then Double Vich. You're taking advantage of the fact that Castoria giving him a 50 Arts along with his own um, 50 Arts. So he has 100% Arts along with MP gain and like a nice attack buff. Like it like on top of his already attack like him already having an attack buff so it makes him looping through the first two waves like fairly easily uh again can hit arts mp not a spoiler you can do a lot with that especially when the base gain is like this high like yes caster um valks have base mp gain and they're definitely using them double cast story over on but that doesn't change like no amount of MP gain buffs or no, sorry. There is a, an amount of MP gain buffs that can get Valks to match Emia. But do you realize how many other types of buffs you'd have to sacrifice to like get their face card refund anywhere near Emia's? Like Emia kind of gets the most both worlds for this of uh, his face cards are not gimped because of like when he was designed he wasn't designed of this being arts it was with buster so it didn't matter how good this number was if he was designed today with arts included they definitely probably would have made it so if you switched mp his mp gain would switch too I, like i would not be surprised if that was their mentality and yeah so let us i kind of pretty much already talked about the mp uh so let's talk about about the pens so oh uh one second i'm getting glare from the window okay 
so like i said earlier if you unlock this uh you're going to be able to pop this uh or pop his attack buff yeah you're gonna be able to uh pop this back to back turns so turn two damage uh is not is not gonna be the same exact as turn uh one like it's shown here there is gonna be an increase in damage however like most people i have mana loading already unlocked on emia um, and I can't really change that until I get more copies. The thing about having mana loading is not that it really gets easier for him. It gets easier for Castoria to pop her MP. Uh, because with the battery situation, he'll be starting at 20. Castoria's AoE 30. He's at 50. You're going to have to use a bitch battery no matter what after you, he pops his skills. So that leaves Castoria's 20. But also remember, he has an arts MP. So all Castoria really needs is 10% from a face card and then an arts chain. And then she's able to pop her MP and give her 30 to 50% attack buff. Which, again, Emiya will appreciate. Uh, it won't change his numbers as much as it used to because now his own attack buff surpasses what uh, Castoria actually gives him. But I mean, like, more attack is more attack. You're not going to say no to it. That helps him, like, the higher, the harder, like, his MP hits in total, the easier it is for him to, like, really ramp up overkill hits. But getting overkill, or not overkill, uh, overcharge is not that much of a concern. As you can see, it's only, like, getting his attack buff up, which is somewhat nice if, like, outside of esports. Like it makes it like when you really start stacking this up uh the enemy can't do damage to you so its own form of survivability uh making the enemy just hit you for less because if an enemy can one shot you and then you give them like 50 percent attack now it takes some at minimum two hits to kill you and you can heal you can do something you can react to that you can't re react to one shots you can only prevent a one shot uh but yeah um the extra damage against casters re um this isn't a bad thing to have is it like casters would give the most refund so like in mixed nodes like you just kill casters easily easier so you get better refund from them uh matt's level i, I don't want to talk about this I don't want to talk about him. At the very least, he only needs six foreign god hearts, and that's it. He doesn't need him in his skills, thank fucking god. Because this was also the time John released, and she needed 60 foreign god hearts. I'm so glad I did not play FGO at the start of the game. Oh my fucking god, I would have quit. I would have never touched FGO if I played at the start of the game. I can pretty confidently say that. Um, Fonzi, 30% MB damage, and this effect is now a moot point with all of his buffs. At the start of the game, kind of made sense because he wasn't able to gen stars, but now he has 100%, if not 200% star gen, and drops 40 stars on his first skill. Yeah, uh, at this current point in, in time, if you're not critting with Emiya, you are doing something extremely wrong. Because every single one of his face cards for all of his turns in farming could be crits. I don't know how they wouldn't wouldn't not be crits. Like he's he's one of those servants where okay, we need to do something with all these excess stars because some of these servants just make too many of them. All right, so that's my um, look over for Emia as he is right now let's go for more of the looping stuff um yeah as you can see here this damage at mp1 for emia is lining up oh that's the wrong sheet is lining up with what was already there so now let's take a look and see where emia is after his buff 
Uh, also, again, keep in mind that this is MP1 Emia that I am testing at level 80, not at any higher copies. Uh, obviously, you're probably not having a pen to max out for Emia at MP1, but I just have it there. So Castoria just has an easier chance of actually being able to MP in the loop, even though I'm not doing it in the loop. <laughs> just thought I'd point that out that you could get more damage in all these amia runs if you're if you just card a little bit with castoria like one arch chain with her actually doing damage with her arts card you'll give her enough mp to actually uh pop her mp on turn two or one it really just depends on when you can get the arts chain okay so at the end of this we have amia doing 132,000. So if you don't know your math, because now Emia has a 30% attack buff that he can double stack with Vich, he has a 50% uh, increase in damage on turn, on turn three. 50%. And remember, like because of how you farm with Emia, he doesn't have his mana burst to use. So he like, and again, if he, he's, he has Vich's buster buffs, which are the same value as his. So it, it really doesn't matter in the long run, but he's able to start with black rail and his damage for single target neutral. It It's not that bad. Like considering like, like considering what his setup actually is like, is more it's more damage than what you think and again he scales really really well with higher copies because of how how like high his refund is and again again this is against neutrals but if you were looking for someone to do more damage you'd use someone else emia is just like the versatile fun unit to use i'm not saying he's the best this damage, even at 132,000, uh, it's definitely at the lower end of the spectrum, unfortunately. All right, so uh, I should have used the other reported data, or sorry, data like it's, this is some serious shit. Should have used the other recordings to show like MP1 Emia. Uh, for this last one, I wanted to show what Emia looks like at his max potential before doing rails like this is the best possible setup he can possibly do mp5 both the pens unlock astoria pen unlock and yeah so let's see what his damage looks like at max potential so getting the castoria mp and again this is just mp1 is wave one damage 130,000 like i said uh or no sorry back comparison bringing this up because that, that's for mp1 not mp5 um yep turn one 130,000 turn two 180,000 but this is with another uh, uh story mp so this is with 60 percent more attack and then MP or final turn, 229,000 damage. And this is type neutral numbers. So is this like groundbreaking damage? No, uh, but compare this to his competition. Uh, this is actually really competitive damage with them. And Okay, so like, take out a rash. Uh, notice what all these characters have in common. All of these are five stars. It takes uh, five stars, some with buffed MPs, to match an MP5 Emia in his optimal setup. So yes, other characters will have far better damage scaling that this is their MP1s and they're matching an MP5 five star, uh, four star. But 
in my opinion that still is definitely something uh and again if you want to go even further you can grail him to 90 or 100 and i'm sure that gap is like gone if not he passed him up because he has i believe 20 50 uh 110 130% crit, uh attack buff yeah i think he has like 130% attack buff so him going from uh him getting an extra 3000 attack because i'm also going to include uh gold foes in there uh probably makes a big difference uh oh sorry 3,000 from this number, not 3,000 from this number. This is uh, 1K foes. Sorry, I, I don't know if I was clear about that, but this is 1K foes. Um, yeah. So I enjoy like showing uh, the place off for this. It makes showing this off so much better. Um, I regret not like, going through this when someone sent me a message about this a couple months ago, but oh my God, this makes my life so much easier. All right, uh, again, happy Shiro Day. I will see you guys on the sh in the stream or on another day. Peace. All right, this is the last thing I wanted to record. I just wanted to show the damage at level 90 or, yeah, level 90 MB5. So this is, if you have Emya at this level and you had him maxed out and been using him for a long time, this is pretty much as high damage as you really as you real realistically should be investing like i probably wouldn't recommend leveling uh servants or four stars beyond like all the way to 120 unless they're like really 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 good i mean it just isn't that good of uh but two hundred fifty thousand. 250,000 turn three damage. That's pretty in line. That's in line with, uh, yeah, no, that is in line with level 90 MP1 five stars using, uh, double bitch over on double castoria over on the art. Like that's actually, I think that's a good balancing endpoint for him. Uh, I think he should be around this level. Obviously, if you Grail him past this point, he's going to surpass them. But, like, you could also Grail use characters for the same boss. So, is he eventually going to get another buff? Probably. Probably they'll buff the MP again. But that, I don't see that happening for a very, very long time. Because right now, Emiya's damage is somewhat competitive. Not an MP1. But further down the line. All right, I just wanted to add this little bonus in uh, right before I actually uh, export the video. Hope you have a good Shiro day, uh, and I'll see you in stream as I'm doing OC3 today. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.